When the Germans surrendered and dropped their weapons in Lake Ochikoto, as many as 100,000 of a Herero and 10,000 Nama indigenous people were exterminated. After the many years of German colonial rule over German Southwest Africa or the modern territory of Namibia, Germany has acknowledged the ripple effects of the total annihilation of its people. Welcome besties to another video on African history, perceptions and culture. About a hundred years ago, the Ovaherero and Nama people in modern-day Namibia lost their lives in the most brutal genocide of its century. We sadly speak of one of the first German concentration camps and Holocaust on the whole of African continent. This is not a forgotten history. It is a story of a Namibian child. The tragic and mass atrocities committed by the Nazi regime against our people have left a huge gap in our population and resources. It all started in 1884 Berlin Conference when the Western nations began to partition Africa in what is commonly known as the Scramble for Africa. The then German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck convened this meeting and the outcome was that Germany take a stronghold of African countries such as Togo, Cameroon, German East and Southwest Africa. The German geographer with the name Friedrich Ratzel brought about the idea that a nation must have an increasing space as it grows in order to prosper. Germany's acquisition of these countries will fuel the idea by Ratzel due to the population boom that left many Germans to wander for shelter in what was later known as the people without a space. German Southwest Africa was selfishly declared suitable not only for trade but farming as well. The vast, beautiful and semi-arid territory was larger than Germany itself, not overpopulated and considered free of tropical diseases. By 1903, the majority of the German settlers settled around here. Unfortunately, their quest for free living space was met with hostility because the land they settled on was already inhibited by indigenous people, mainly the Ovaherero, who lived here peacefully. The Germans found it increasingly hard to accept the terms of living on a territory which they did not have total control over. Essentially, the resources also belonged to the indigenous people. This did not sit well with them, nor did it fit the racial theories they were used to in Germany. What led to German hostilities was essentially the idea of renting land and buying cattle from indigenous people. Their sole mandate was to settle on the territory and gain full control over resources and the people, which they later did but to much extremities. There are many instances where the Ovaherero people suffered all sorts of unimaginable abuse, non-payment of their wages, killings fueled by a strong dislike of the indigenous people. With the onset of the Rinderpest cattle disease, the Ovaherero people started losing their cattle in epic proportion, this affecting their source of dietary protein which gave them energy and wealth. 
The German settlers and soldiers saw the opportunity in the Herero people's physical and economic weakness and became very brutal in their policies and quests to annex the territory. After news of the attempted 1904 rebellion at Okahanja, the Germans launched full-scale war at the important Ova Herero Center in Ochimbingwe. What happened here began to repeat elsewhere across the country. This was no longer a rebellion, but a war of independence. The Ovaherero people fought tirelessly against the oppressive nature of German colonial rule. On the 12th of January 1904, the Nama people also joined in the rebellion under the leadership of Chief Hendrik Redboy. When the great chief was killed in a crossfire, Jacob Marengo continued to lead his people in the resistance and defense of their homeland for another two years going. It took on mass casualties, leaving German settlers and soldiers at the mercy of the indigenous people. The German governor Theodor Ludwig quickly realized they were significantly outnumbered by the people under the strong leadership of Chief Samuel Maharero. An attempt for negotiated peace talk fell on death's ear, so the German monarch Kaiser Wilhelm II responded by sending a new leader, Lothar van Trotter, to the colony to set up new policies. This time around, the orders is to deliberately exterminate the indigenous people. His orders read as follow. The Hereros are no longer German subjects. The Herero people will have to leave the country. If they refuse, I'll force them with cannons to do so. Within the German boundaries, every Herero with or without firearm, with or without kettles, will be shot. I will no longer accommodate women and children. I shall drive them back to their people whom I should give orders to shoot at them. When the Ovaherero people realized the danger, they moved to the area of Waterberg. But this did not evade them from the colossal extermination plan and crusade to increase the living space for Germans. On the dawn of the death of the great paramount chief, Samuel Maharero, in 1907, the rebellion came to a halt. The Germans introduced a system of human enclosures known as concentration camps. The sad story is that in the heart of the capital, Vantuk, lies the Alta Festa, which was one of the first mass concentration camps and also a military camp or base for the German soldiers. And for many years, men, women and children were forced into the contract labor system. The locals also had their water source poisoned, food supplies cut during this time. Many were killed in combat and others from dehydration in the desert. They worked under severe inhumane conditions, especially those on Shark Island in the harbor town of Ludritz, as well as Swakopmund. For more than half of all the prisoners who were caught perished within the first year of detention, either due to disease or exhaustion. Some prisoners on Shark Island were taken to West Africa as forced laborers. It is widely known that the remains of the victims of the genocide were thrown in places like the Namib Desert 
and also thrown overboard into the Atlantic Ocean. Many of the beautiful buildings we also glorify as the Little Germany in Namibia, in towns of Swakopmund and Warfish Bay, as well as Ludwitz, were built by the sweat, the pain, and the blood of the victims of this sad era. The governments of the two countries have been in talks for years now to negotiate reparations for the massacre by German colonial imperialism and the return of the indigenous human remains that were taken by Germany. The previous offer which was put on the table remained an outstanding issue. The money will be deposited in a fund that is separate and outside the government of the Republic of Namibia's national budget. The two countries continue to negotiate a revised offer and last week our friends at Tunacheki mentioned in their news update segment that Germany accorded Namibia close to 1.3 billion US dollar for this genocide and reparation as well as an official apology. Germany states that the admission of guilt is a gesture of recognition of the immeasurable suffering afflicted on the victims. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share the video if you found it insightful and informative. Also, if you are interested in videos like this, be sure to subscribe with post notifications on so you are reminded when we post our next video. This has been Becky from Sizzle's Diaries. See you next time. Bye besties.